Oh, right, all right, all right. What the heck is going on, everybody? We've got ourselves a big best of seven elimination match in the Masters Coliseum. Every elimination match is a best of seven, so no one goes down without a chance to fight. And what a surprise finding him here. It is Onside Gaming's Maru. In that loser's bracket, it is the round of six of the loser's bracket. I just heard Dot shout from the other room. I think she's that excited to hear about Maru opening two ranks on the low ground. Down here on the bottom right side, we've got his opponent, Dark. I would say usually an underdog in this matchup, but you've got to remember that Valencia 2022 Grand Finals, Dark came out swinging double Evo really fast and wrecked Maru. He absolutely wrecked him in those first two games, got the momentum in the series. Maru clawed his way back though and almost won. Ended up losing a tight game seven. It was a, a fantastic Grand Finals they played. Of course, the more recent Grand Finals was GSL last year, where Maru absolutely trounced Dark. And that's kind of the, the nature of these two. Maru does win more often. He is the favorite. And uh, as a result, when he wins, it's usually a bit more one-sided. Whereas when Dark wins, it's a... Oh, he just barely overwhelms there, overwhelms him and gets there. So we'll see if that, that theme continues. Um, obviously, in the interest of entertainment, I do prefer Dark uh, winning because the games are usually closer. But uh, I, he's got to fix some of those holes. Um... The GSL finals last year, what were the big problems? Well, Maru destroys him in endgame if it gets very static. He did that on one of the, the late game maps, I believe. I think it was um, Gresvin. I think it was Gresvin. And, and Dark just looked hopeless. Uh, that being said, Dark did rip him apart on Neo Humanity. Normally a good map for turtling, as the command center does go down behind this. Hatchery first into quick link speed, by the way. Solid opening to block the Turex Reaper. So uh, the problems really though, why Maru got so far ahead and won the series is he just kept doing surprising timing attacks. Uh, uh, the Ascension to Aya game, where he, oh sorry, no, not Ascension to Aya, um, Ancient Cistern. I always get those map names confused. Ancient Cistern, Maru did a 3cc build and then he just didn't build workers for like a minute to get more Marines out and just killed him with a Marine tank medevac timing and Dark just died. Dark Sling Bane builds in general are not that well refined. And Maru kind of realized, look, in the late game, or maybe not end game, but like early late game, like you're so good at making comebacks and, and being hard to deal with and you can swarm if I give you room to breathe. And Maru basically said, you're just not good enough with your builds to survive a solid timing attack. And he killed him over and over again with all these different kind of seven, eight, nine minute timing attacks. Dark just could not defend them. See if Maru brings that similar vein of aggression today. Oceanborn has to be his map pick. I'm really happy that we're seeing more and more the Terrans are picking this map first. I was saying since the start, just based on my own ladder experiences, this felt like the shortest, scariest map to play against a Terran on because their pushes come through the middle so well. These ledges and high grounds and rocks create really nice push paths for them. Um, a lot of the Terrans were always picking hard lead first. But uh, who knows? Maybe it's just that hard lead is getting vetoed by the Zergs now. We'll see as this series goes on, on if, if hard lead gets picked as one of the future maps may just be the Zerg Vito's changed to adjust and that's forced the Terrans to pick this map. Oh! Oh! He's ascending! He's ascending! That Reefer dies mid-jump and he ascends. That is a rare animation you only get when the Reaper is mid-jump up the cliff and the last Zergling hit rips it to shreds and it just kind of floats upwards awkwardly. Fantastic. Uh, Starfort there, third command center is almost finished. So we're going to be seeing a few Hellions but then also... Oh, Liberator! He's not swapping the starport onto the reactor. Just yet. Probably swap it onto that factory soon. I do wonder if we get a couple Cyclones queued up next, though. Uh, just more Hellions for now. Oh, Lingzar running in. Oh my... Going for the surround is a crazy move for Dark there. Dark's the kind of guy to see someone pointing a gun at him, and he runs at them and stabs them in the foot. And you're like, okay, that's a crazy move. <laughs> but he scampers away while, the, while, while Maru's too shocked. If Maru got a big volley off him in the choke point as he ran back up that ramp, he could have lost a lot of Zerglings, but you know what? Works out okay for Dark. Oh, but Maru anticipated this move. Maru goes north. He can cut off most of those Zerglings from getting out of there. Big volley. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Really well done. Double Engineering Bay is on the way. Dark is still just massing Lings. What the hell? Oh, he's doing a Ravager Ling all in? Oh my god, I didn't even realize. Sorry, guys. I, this is so rare these days. You never see this anymore. Oh, he's building five overlords, though. He's so supply blocked. Dark was so busy distracting him. But he's hidden it so well. He hid it so well with the Zerglings. Oh my god, this was so well done. And look at this. Maru is like, oh god, where are the drones? And it's too late. He sees it too late. The Stim. 15 seconds from Stim finishing. It's going to burn down. 
The starport reactor's gonna go down as well. And Dark's happy to take his time because he's like, this is all your production. I don't need to shove into your main to kill your production. This is why you don't low ground wall off because it, it loses you games. Liberator does start to smack those workers there. All your production's on the low ground. I don't need to push up that choke point. That's normally where Zergs get killed when they're doing all ins. It's trying to force their way into the main production. Not this time. Not this guy. Dark is all over it. The Ravager's stutter step is great. The SCVs have been pulled. The Biles aren't really landing just yet, but he's at least forcing Mara to spread. And as I say, they're not landing. They start landing. <laughs> Lots of Marines getting taken out by Bile. He's killed almost all the SCVs. Disastrous opening here for Maru. Dark, I love it because this is the best map Maru's picking in the series. You're surprising him with a super sneaky all-in. The Zerglings keeping his Reaper Hellion distracted. If he saw it coming, he could have got some bunkers up. He could have maybe defended. He's trying to pull to the high ground, but he's only got one tank, plus one weapons, and a medevac in production. This is the saddest production tab for a Terran at six minutes into the game I've ever seen. Maru's like, just let me get one tank out. And Dark's like, are you kidding, bro? You are so dead. Just get out. You are done for. Reaper's getting taken out. That Reaper just got ripped in half by the bile. We can see his insides floating up past the camera. Man, we are getting all the rare dead Reaper animations in this game. Now, he's gone back to droning finally, has Dark. He still hasn't killed the Liberator? Dark! Just build a sport. Does he not have any queens? He's got one queen. He's still trying to attack. Just deal with it. Oh my god, finally he gets rid of that Liberator. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way Maru can make this more than a, a five-minute game, right? No? Maru's like, well, my Liberator did enough damage. I've got three command centers and mules. Maybe he should still be screwed because retaking his natural is a conundrum at this point. He's going to have to put a tank here. He's going to try and put a tank on the low ground. He can't siege that or it'll die. So he's just kind of dropping there. A tank on the high ground does take out a Ravager. Woo! <laughs> I swear. What is with this replay? You know, every time you, you replay a replay, it re-simulates the raw data. So you'll get different death animations, by the way, guys. Um, but we are getting very lucky this time with all the super fun ones. Tank on sieges so it can't get filed. Oh, he's so screwed, though. He needs to just pull back everything and just use the tanks and the medevacs and just dodge the projectiles from the ravages, I think. Oh, this is so much damage. Dark is finally droning up behind this. Dark definitely could have macroed far better than this. He's still only got three queens behind this. He's floating an immense amount of money, but he takes out Stim again? Oh, man. I mean, Maru, there's, there's heavy doses of copium, and then there's whatever Maru's smoking right now. Maru is in the, the copium den, dude. Dude, he's going to get blackmailed by a 17th century uh, opium den dealer, you know? he's, he's he, Copium den, sorry. Got to stick with the meme there. Double Evo's on the way. Spire has started. Dark's macro behind these attacks is always not nearly as good as you'd expect it to be. It's always like, okay, how long did you take to get these queens injecting? And why do, why why are we still floating money? <laughs> Where's the macro hatch, bro? It doesn't matter, though. That's, that's dark. Clean macro organization? Never. But will he hit you with the sneakiest timing ever? Hiding it with perfect zergling control? Use fantastic ravager micro? Yeah, yeah, he will. As always, Dark is just that that amazing player that bucks all the trends and, and shows us unique games that we're not used to because he, he just doesn't optimize what everyone else does. And there is an advantage to that as well because if you're really good at something, you'd think, well, that... Say say you're, you know, I have 90% macro ability. That should make, you know, should give me value. Sometimes 90% cheeky all-in skill gives you way higher value than 90% macro skill, right? Because... People aren't as used to playing against the 90% cheeky all-in skill. They're much more practiced against the 90% macro players. Have you guys heard of this? There's this small little place. Have you guys heard of it? It's called Europe. So basically, the way European StarCraft players play, I don't know if they're like this in other games. I don't follow that many other esports. Basically, European StarCraft players, um, you can tell they grew up playing like just campaigns and they just want to wall off and defend. They just want to play macro. They want to, they want to, they want to be optimal. Asian players in general, but Koreans, uh, Koreans and Chinese as well, Taiwan, Vietnam. No, most, it's basically kind of, the, the Asian meta in general is more aggressive, I would say, yeah. And that, that spreads across pretty much all of the Asian countries that I'm closely familiar with, and as someone who competes in that region, or at least used to, very familiar with them. Is this a single Mutalisk harass? What is Dark doing? Is that a scouting Mutalisk? You know you can just make an Overseer, right? He's like, oh, this is faster, and it shoots. <laughs> What did we just look at? 
Why? Why would you do that? <laughs> is, is he trolling Maru? Is it, he's, I'm surprised he's not dropping question marks in the chat for Maru still staying in the game. If he's going to fly a single Mutalist through massive road Ravager timing coming in. This is going to be nearly impossible to stop. There's so few Marines. They don't even have combat shields yet. It's just so much Roach Ravager. The SCV is being pulled off the line. is a great idea for Maru. He might be able to hold this first push, I think. Oh, triple bile goes down. Good disengage. Now he's building seven Mutalisks and 12 Roaches. And you know what, guys? There are two missile turrets. I was going to say, it would be so sick if there was no missile turrets. The whole, the whole reason to go one Mutalisk is to lull him. He's like, look, I have this tech, but I'm not going to use it. I'm just building one. And you're like, please don't build turrets so I can surprise you a minute from now with seven or eight Mutalisks. Uh, Dark's still on 66 workers, which is fine. He doesn't need more than that. As long as he keeps transferring to his fourth base, takes a fifth base, and just keeps going, he should be able to kill him with the next wave. Interestingly, he's dro he droned a little bit there, did Dark. Surprising. Thought he'd just go full roaches. The, the single Mutalisk was definitely a brag. Boy, look, I got Mutalisk take. I think I agree with Twitch chat on that one. Oh, he's going after the tank. Eh, not worth it. This is a Mutalist. Gets an SCV at least. Oh, another Mutalist does go down. Chunks go flying. Normally, if someone talks about it, they're, they're spraying chunks. It's uh, kind of nasty and involves a bit too much alcohol being consumed. In this case, though, it just means spraying your opponent's remains across the map. Marine Marauder coming down. Tutu is finishing here for the Terran, which means double upgrade advantage. Biles on that tank. Tank on the left not being focused, though. The Marines are focusing him down. Oh my god, Maru holds! The Mutas take out the tank from behind. Maru will hold on. But he loses another 16 workers, all of his siege tanks, and of course, Dark is rich. Mutalist in the main being annoying. The Marines are double upgraded up. Uh, so 2-2 two, two versus 1-1, one, one, but the Mutalist can going to have to rotate around the, ra the back. A really fun way to start the series. And remember, we talked about Valencia and Dark surprising Maru two games in a row to get an advantage. It's very important, I think, for Dark to, to take an early map like this. And especially taking Maru's map away from him is massive. Usually creates a very fun series if the players are capable of beating each other on their map. This is what happens when you're willing to play a high danger, you know, high risk, high reward StarCraft. I feel like the more defensive players very rarely steal their opponent's map off them. But if you play a dynamic style like Dark, you can grind him down. Maru finally gets off that Copium and does tap out. The first Ravager Ling attack just did way too much damage. I just want to show you guys very quickly the vision of how well that was disguised. If you look at this from about 4 minutes 30 onwards, that's usually when the Hellions are kind of poking in and scouting that base and seeing no drones. But that, that crazy Ling move I kind of joked about, it was just to disguise this. And then the moment the Hellion Reaper goes there, he goes for a counterattack. Maru comes in. And he's like, oh, those lings are going to be annoying, aren't they? I don't have many units. I better not lose my stim. I better go home and protect it. And it's kind of a problem because if, if he went in and just saw there was only two drones there, Maru would have been fine against this or at least had a, a much better shot. He would have probably started building cyclones, marines, tried to maybe even build bunkers out front of his base because you want to protect the stim. If you get two bunkers out front and you can pull a bunch of SCVs to repair, you know, you can hold on pretty smoothly. But because these Zerglings distract him and leave him on a merry chase, he doesn't see it till the Roach Ravagers are arriving at his base, and that is a disaster. All right, all right, all right. Maru has started rough, this series rough, and now he's going into Zerg Heaven Equilibrium. Looks like he's used up his veto on Radhuset Station, and uh, he's now going to open with a Proxy Reaper. You can't play standard here on the Zerg map. He needs to try and steal the Zerg map away from him. He's going to go Proxy Reaper. We know that because it is a gas behind this. No two barracks now. Dark scouting around. He's got one Overlord out front, one down south. Does look like it's going to see this if he doesn't reposition it, but a lot of the time you'll see the Zerg change their mind and, and move that Overlord. But I think if he goes there, he barely sees the edge of the barracks. Hatchery Gas Pool does come up here for Dark. And it's a 16 Hatchery. Pretty standard stuff. Now, with no second gas, this looks like Maru's just going to expand Orbital reaper and we should see an scv moving down to the natural to take that command center there we go pulls him down now did the overlord see that oh the overlord saw the scv coming in dark immediately pulling a few workers off gas okay he's gonna stay very mineral focused oh that's unfortunate because he's thinking this is a two racks marine rush so he's thinking oh i don't need gas i just need minerals queen zerglings but he's actually gonna want to have link speed because of the the early reapers so 
This is a little bit awkward for Dark as a start. And you can see he's floating a lot of money, but that's because he's about to build his two queens. Eight Zerglings, two queens. Dark with a big reaction so far, even though it's only a single barracks. Now, if he realizes what's up, he sees the Reaper. If he can sneak two Lings out across the map and go for that command center, that would be massive. But the Reaper's already here before the Lings even pop. That is, of course, not going to be possible. The Lings coming out. They're going to try and defend. Oh, quick Spore Trick. Nicely done there by Dark. Saves that drone. Lings trying to trap the Reaper. Ah, uh, he maybe could have cut him off there if he micro that a little bit better, but it's, they're very slippery. Hard to catch the Reaper before the Queen's out. Those two Lings, actually, if those two guys continued Riot, they might have got over there without being spotted. Maybe he could have intercepted the Marine and got that on the way home. Now, the downside of this opening is the factory has to build its own reactor, so Hellions are very delayed. That being said, it's a well-timed factory and the third command center hidden in the back of the base. Overlord's going to come in for the full scout here. Marine will try to get back to stop it, but Dark diverts here. Oh, he's checking the expansion. Oh, so he makes sure there's no gold. Reaper does get blocked by the Zerglings. Overlord starts getting hit. Oh, he doesn't see the third command center. Oh, okay. I mean, there's so much space where it could be hidden up there. It could be hidden there. And he wants to not lose that Overlord, which is fair enough. Now, Dark, 44 out of 44. It hasn't started an Overlord. He doesn't have a third base on the way either. He's got his Link Speed now. Does have a good Queen count. Four Queens. Two Overlords do start up. It's not the worst supply block, um, but it does feel like he needs to, you know, keep that droning going. Reaper does go down. Three Lava sitting there idle. Uh, still no move out for a third base. This is bizarre that Dark is taking this long to take a third. There we go, finally. I would have so much urgency with that because I feel like four minutes is very late for a third base. Dark, come on, mate. You gotta, you gotta drop that third hatchery. Okay, three minutes 50 it starts. That's that's as the third command center finishes for Maru. Definitely not an optimal opening for Dark. And it, it's interesting as well that he prioritized Ling Speed so much because you've got to wonder why. What is Ling Speed going to achieve for you in this game? You know he proxied Barracks, which means he's built one Reaper, maybe two, and then his factory is going to be way slower to get a lot of Hellions out. If, you want, if you're worried about a four Hellion run by, well, that's going to hit you at five minutes. So do you really need Ling Speed done at four minutes? I would, I would argue no. So I think Dark got a bit muddled up by this opening. Had his priorities, uh, his priorities mixed up a little bit. Just not used to dealing with a single barracks Reaper proxy. Even though I have seen a few other Terrans like Clem try the same build order. Bailey Nest is there. Second and third gas on the natural. So Dark's going to try and saturate those gases a little bit while he waits for that third base to kick in. He's already up on five queens. About to be seven. Oh my. Oh my. It's It's mech. Hellion Banshee into a second factory right now. Maru, you naughty boy. What are you up to? And he can just use the barracks to keep building reactors. If he wants to go battle mech or tech labs. If he wants to go for a more traditional style of mech. Second tech lab. Okay, so he's going to do two, two tech labs, one factory. That's going to allow him a little bit more siege tank and Thor production. Uh, he can still build four cyclones, four Hellions at a time. If he wants to use them just for one at a time. Which is quite a lot. Lair, one third of the way complete. Creep spread's looking like it's starting to get out there. But this is, of course, where the Hellions start to cause troubles. 53 workers against 43. And the, the lack of pressure there's been... I, I do feel like Dark could be a little higher on workers than this if he'd optimized something. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's the third base timing or what. And if he realizes it's mech, he's going to want to take that fourth base as well. He now sees the third floating down very early. And she's going to come across the map to join up. Hurricane Thrusters is on the way for Maru. He could go straight for Blue Flame with the second tech lab. That might be why he's going for it, since it doesn't look like he wants to build siege tanks this early. Yeah, Blue Flame straight away. So he's going to go Cyclone, Hellion, Blue Flame, plus Banshees. And we've seen him do this before, and he had speed with the Banshees as well. It's a very mobile style. You kind of need to get a fair bit of damage done, though, because that army doesn't scale that well into the later stages. Three drones to start. That's a great start. Gets a bit of damage on the Queen before backing away. Hatchery's on the way. Insanely fast infestation pit. What is Dark doing? Is he rushing ultras? He still thinks it's a bio game, remember, which is a huge problem for him. Oh, it's a huge problem because he, he doesn't have a Roachhorn. Roachhorn would be ideal. Hydras can work against this as well. But of course, they're a little bit further down the tech tree and very gas heavy. 68 workers against 54. Despite that, the income is dead even on the mineral. Slight gas advantage for Dark. Cyclones show themselves. Here we go. Blue Flame, 30 seconds out. Hurricane Thrust is 10 seconds out. We've got seven Cyclones, eight Aliens, three Banshees. There are five Zerglings on the map. Oh, no. 
Dark making lings, making banes, but baneling speed is still 45 seconds away. Dark needs to delay fighting this until baneling speed comes in, and he needs to go mass zergling and surround, but he's going drones! He's making a hive, a hydrodent, infestors! He cancelled his Rotron! He's trying to build six drones in the midst of this, the greed of Dark. You know you need to flank this army. I think he's relying on the Infestors, but they're not here yet. Queen's take out a Banshee. That's a nice start, but there's no Transfuse Energy. This is every single Queen he has, including his Injecting Queens. They're starting to fall right now. Massive damage for Maru. Only three Queens left. They don't have any Overseers. The Overseers went down. The Cyclones focused that. Maru's Banshee's beating the Queens. The Cyclone Alien does lose almost all the Aliens to the Ling Bane, but there's enough Cyclones standing, and those Lings are getting washed up. 24 Zerglings in production. Make that 28. The Banshees are up there. The Banshees are above the rally point, though. How do you get these Lings and Banes together to surround this? He needs to go for one big surround. He does land a nice Fungal. Great Fungal, but no Zerglings to capitalize. That was only about 10 Zerglings. Another Fungal is needed, but the Lings are petering out. He doesn't have the production. The rally here is huge. There's a fourth Command Center and a double Armory on the way. Two more Reactors building. Maru has a mass production tech and upgrades coming in behind this. This was a stiff timing, but this is not even an all-in, and yet it's going to win the game nonetheless dark needed to respect that a little bit more and he needed to to try to find a way to back away maybe threaten the surround on that army either way both players have stolen their opponent's maps a great start to the series all right tying up the series maru looking pretty good there now this is interesting he's picked golden aura as his next map i've heard people say it's kind of good for Taran. i think it's kind of bad as the game goes on it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Dark in the bottom right is going for a 15 hatch, 15 pool. And uh, I just a standard one racks expand, you know, barracks gas. Looks like a Reaper expand for Maru. Uh, the problem is, like, your, your three base is very easy to defend. This ramp is super defensible. Um, your fourth base up here, a little bit more wide open, especially once those rocks go down. But if you can defend those rocks all game, very hard for Zerg to get in through, like, this, this choke point, through there... This spy's a bit more wide open. But I feel like once they take the fifth, this base can get busted, even if you've got tanks on the high ground. This base sticks out like a sore thumb. Um, I cast Dark against... Uh, or was it Dark Maru? Actually, there was a game, and I believe it was an online cup or something, where I was, I was way too harsh. Um, Dark didn't play well, by any means. Um, but yeah, it was on this map where he just kind of failed to mine out the corners even though his opponent was turtling but he also failed to really bring the momentum and aggression up and whilst i stand by the analysis of what i said i just think i presented it very poorly in an overly critical tone but I i'm really hoping as a massive dark fan that we don't end up in that same standstill because i look at this map and i assume maru is looking to play late game bio do some normal harassment some mid game try some widow mine pressure and then just you know play a big macro game get it faster get a fourth and progress from there. Factories on the way. No second gas. That tells us it is a three command center opening. Reaper's going to back away for now. First inject is a little late on both hatcheries because he was microing there. Dark should have injected at least the main a bit earlier. If not his natural since that queen was busy fighting. A little sloppy. The whole point of this opening is to get those injects going very early. And I do feel they're a bit later than they should have been. But not the end of the world. It's got a quick ling speed. It's going to be always a little more supply booked on 36 than you'd expect as well. Normally, you don't go four queens and Zergans. He's also missing an inject in the main right now. Mm, he'll have his natural saturated very fast. And I guess he's just going to move out to take a third now. Okay, cool. This is an interesting version of the opening. He seems really paranoid about Maru trying to get him with like weird Reaper timings or fast Hellions. Like the Ling speed is being prioritized a lot by Dark. And you don't normally see that with a 15-15 build. That's usually a bit more just like drone as fast as I can. Nonetheless, 16, 16, 3 on gas. And as the extra Overlords build, should be seeing him drone up a little bit more. He builds 7 more drones immediately for that third base. Should rally over to that third, I'd say, probably as well. More overlords are on the way. Third command center almost finished. Viking for Maru. Going to get rid of this overlord that gives way too much vision. If you don't get rid of this overlord on this map as a Terran, you are shooting yourself in the foot. You need to remove this overlord as an order of priority. It's even worth if you go lib first. Sometimes bringing two marines over plus the lib to kill it on the pillar before sending the liberator across the map.
Stim's on the way, Liberator building as well. Aliens are poking forward. So it's Viking into Liberator. So not the fastest transition into Bio. We'll see how well Dark handles that. He's got Sporkroller behind the main. Lair and Baneling Nest are on the way. So he's going to be doing the Baneling Speed version, delaying his upgrades a little bit. Good clean up on that creep on the right side. Now, Dark is one of the few top Zergs who doesn't split his queens yet. He's also only got five queens at 445. And he's got a lot of Zerglings for this early. I mean, it makes sense to have this Zergling count now. But why is his queen count so low? And his drone count sucks. And now he's going double Eva. This build is trash. No, this is a classic Dark build order, guys. This is this is a really bad 15-15. I could run this by Serral, Rainer, Lambo, uh, Rogue. They would all laugh at this build. They'd be like, what is Dark doing? Uh, he's seen a pretty standard sign of just a macro build from his opponent, and he's playing so scared, like he thinks there's a big timing coming in. This is crazy. Okay, Hellion Reaper coming down to the south side. Hellion Reaper rotating north now. Oh, Liberator rotates down south. This build is bad, says the caster to one of the best players of all time. Yeah, absolutely. That's what makes Dark one of the best players of all time, is he's able to win with bad builds. Ooh, Hellions get three drones, not bad. Liberator did go down, though. Nice Queen Spore movement by Dark, really well done. Only losing three drones, five Zerglings, that's a good defense. As always, I'm open to discuss anything, both YouTube, if you guys post timestamps of any moment where I say something and you disagree, I like discussing StarCraft. I'm very passionate about this game, so if you guys ever have a, a reason why something I'm saying is wrong, let me know. But <clears throat> this man saturated his third very late while having a low queen count and uh, basically just did a, a very weak opening. He's defended really well, though. This is always the thing with Dark. He often falls behind and then wins off his tactics. Rainer himself has said he thinks Dark's micro is better than his, and that he feels like Dark can wriggle out of just about any bad situation off of his fantastic micro and engagements. Um, he's, he's, he's being like, like, Dark can bring it back from pretty much anything. He's never dead. You always have to work very hard to finish Dark off. You can never get lazy. Couple aliens go down. That was a little lazy from Maru. Viking on the right side doing what it can. Marines here are going to drop... Equal workers. So even though Dark's done really well, he's traded better, he's crushed the aggression, he's still down and even in workers, and that's because that opening build was very weak. Fourth base is going to get cancelled. There's no way he can defend that. Baneling Speed's not quite here. He's setting up for a giant Ling Bane counterattack, though. Maru does not have many units at home. If he loads that medevac and moves out, he's in big trouble. Wait, what is he doing? Oh, this is interesting. Dark's trying to send even more units across for a counterattack right now. This is so weird. Oh, he's trying to he's trying to trap the units. The Ling Bane coming in. The quick SCV pull for Maru, though. Maru should be good here. But wait, he didn't borrow the mine. Has to cancel the command center. Marine's trying to spread. If that depot doesn't get up. Oh, the depot doesn't get up. Can he get in? No, only one Bane Link can get in. Great hold by Maru. Maru's got this. Maru with a fantastic hold. Dark trying some sneaky tactics. I, I, I think he should have just rolled in, blown up the depots, and gone in from the front path. If he was going to go around the other side to cut off the retreat, he needed to come in with Bane Links from this side and show himself like here, so the SCVs have nowhere to run. But Dark took too long to do that. He lost his fourth. His new fourth is misplaced. And uh, we once again see how weak Dark Sling Bane openings are. His build orders are very weak. His execution of the early game is very inconsistent. And this is the scary thing I talked about at the start of the series. It's how Maru crushed him in that GSL finals. Because when the first big Stim versus Sling Bane interactions happened, Maru would just kill him repeatedly. And that was something that happened over and over again in that series. Now, he did cancel the fourth command center. He did slow down Maru's progression a little bit, but Maru immediately rebuilt that. He's, he's Widow Mind dropping the south. Even though Dark handles that well, Dark is down 10 workers. Maru's kind of got him pinned in a corner. No creep spread, no map control, but also Maru's up 10 workers with a fourth base and his 2-2 is ahead. Maru is ahead in every single metric. If Dark can even make this game last to the 15-minute mark, it will be something greater than almost any other Zerg could do. Most Zergs are pretty much completely dead in the next minute or two of this game. The, you know, making it to 11 minutes would be tough. For Dark, though, he says, I'm behind. What do I do when I'm behind? Knuckle down. Get four Infestors, get Burrow, and try to hang on. And the Infestor, one of the best comeback units in the game. Let's see if some Overseers get added in here as well. That'll be fantastic. Biomine coming on forward. 
Marine Marauder there. The tank on the high ground is brilliant. Fungal! Massive Fungal! The Widow Mine assists! He does lose an Infestor, but that was a glorious engagement for Dark. Still behind on the units lost from those last few trades. But that is the sort of comeback move that allows Dark to be such a legendary player, even when he's got such a glaring weakness with his early build orders. That was fantastic. Marine's coming forward. Watch out for the Infestor, Link Bane. He's still behind, of course, and, and very far behind. He'll need a few more engagements like that. Now, obviously, Fungal on the Metavac's not worth it. He was hoping to trap the Marines. They can't load up when they've got that Fungal on them. Oh, where's the Overseer? Overseer very slow, so these Widow Mines got a second round off, but he tanked it with the Queens, which is great. Ling's gonna go for a big surround. Widow Mines getting some decent shots off. Uh-oh. He's got to get rid of this tank in this position. This is a very costly trade for Dark right now, though. Really well done by Maru to make this as messy as possible. And he's gonna counterattack on the right. Oh, no. Banely Nest is in the open. But wait, Infestors. Nice scan. He realized there's Infestors out. He knows he needs to see if they're coming and react ahead of time. Where's the Overseer? Overseer's here. He didn't clean up all the Widow Mines, though. There's still two Widow Mines out to the left. Dark is still trapped in his corner. 70 drones against 80 SCVs. He needs to make magic happen. Maru just needs to keep on playing solid and he shouldn't be able to lose this game. You're playing Dark. And Dark says shoulda, woulda, coulda, mate. What shoulda happen and what happens in my games are two completely different things. If you haven't learned this yet, you don't know who I am. Fifth command center's on the way. Up to eight barracks, concussive shells coming in. That's a Ghost Academy. Still no 3-3 started for Maru. Of course, the Hive is not... Oh, actually, Hive's finished for Dark. Dark does actually have a bit of cash he's floating right now. <laughs> the scan sees the Infestors. Barut Infestors will add a bit of depth to this uh, setup for Dark. He's going to need to leave some Ling Bane in the main. Dark's not a big organizer of control groups. You'll notice these guys in the main are not on a control group, guys. He's got the army on the left on a control group, but the guys in the main, he's just manually controlling. Massive Widow Mine hit gets dragged into his army. Fifth base gets denied as well. Oh, he's trying to defend. Good Fungal. But it's still costly. So much Lings and Banes being needed to use just to clear the front line of Marauders. Maru should have this game in the bag. Two more drones do go down. I guess they were the ones just on the edge of that base. Fungal there. Oh, Widow Mine on the Hydras. I love the Infest account, but now that it's not just Mass Marine, you've got these tankier Marauders in, you've got pre-spreads. Dark cannot come back from there. All right, back onto a Terran map here. I think I've been wrong about the map picks and that it's actually not one player picks a map than the other. I think it's a bit more like one player picks one, the other one picks two. So nonetheless, this is a Terran favored map and it is not 2-2 two, two right now. It is 2-1. to one. Maru with a pretty solid opening in that last game and uh, really straightforward, solid play. I would have loved to see it tested in how it goes into the mid game. But uh, Dark's opening, of course, was not great. He's gone back to a 16 hatchery build, which he's much better at. He's done this so many times over the year. It's a more years. It's a more straightforward build order, and it allows you to just get that link speed, which Dark is showing in this series. He's not comfortable without Zergling speed, and as a result, I don't think he should open up 15 hatchery at all. Oh, he fought his queen. He forgot his queen. Dark, wake up, Dark. What the hell, man? Oh my god, he thinks he started a queen and he didn't. What the frig is this? Wait, wait, no. This is on purpose. Is he going to take a third? No, he just completely missed it. He only just started it. Oh my gosh. Dark is all over the shop, guys. That last game was a hot mess from him in the opening. And this game's not starting out well either. Shout out to Dark, by the way, guys. He, he was playing for... Uh... Oh, oh, that gets sniped. He was playing for Dragon Kaisi, but he actually just got picked up by Talon Esports yesterday. Uh, a famous Valorant team. And they're going to be supporting him through Katowice, so that's exciting. But Reaper getting itself a drone, forgetting his natural queen as well, so that's not injecting. Ugh. Awkward, awkward start here, but at least he has a much quicker third base against the third command center. So it's going to get him back in the vein of a more familiar situation to where Dark can play quite well. That's uh, uncharacteristic mistakes, man. Reaper struggling to get up that high ground. The Zergling defense is good. Dark's going to come in. And I think as soon as he sees the third command center, he probably turns around. Notice he's trying to stay out of vision as long as possible. Reveals himself at the last second. Sees the star port, sees the command center. And there's no way a marine can kill a big chunky overlord boy before he escapes back over there into the abyss. Henny and Reaper on the left side will come over and see that quick third base. Roach Warren as well. Yeah, Dark, okay, Dark, Dark's doing very wise things here. Dark, like I said, is not good with Ling Bane openings. But Roach openings are easy mode. Um, 
there's a reason some players who are very, they just want the slowest, easier style of playing StarCraft. I recommend my original Zerg Bronze to GM, which is Roach focused rather than Ling Bane focused. Because Roach is just a slower pace. It feels a little bit more like you're playing, you know, I don't know, like a Protoss opening or something. Because you're building these big, expensive, chunky units. You don't have to build as many small, fast, fragile, high damage boys and micro them. Oh. Those Lings get caught. We could hide the Roach tech, that'd be great. He's got a second and third gas up. It looks like he's going for a big timing again. Oh, he's just going to do Ravager Ling again. He's trying to do the same thing as from Oceanborn. Okay, Dark's decided this is my favorite trick. I'm going to keep trying to pull this out. But this time, he's not really distracting the Hellion Reaper that much. Maru is taking the bait. And remember, his barracks aren't on the low ground either. If he builds Cyclones right now, gets a bunker up, he should be fine. But dude, he's spending so much time chasing the Zerglings. He, need, he should have split the Reaper or something to check. Seeing no workers in that third is huge. Maru is playing so greedy right now. You died to this in game one. You should have your, your hair standing on end. You should have your alarm bells raised. He's just playing completely standard build order right now. Double eBay in the front of the natural. Maru is not paying attention. And look at that. He barely misses seeing the roaches with the liberator. He's literally like, let's do some Hellion harassment. He sees an empty third mineral line. And he, he should realize at this point, oh God, he cancels the engineering base, starts two bunkers too late. The roach ravage is already there. Oh, Maru, he scans the natural and confirms what's happening. He screwed He screwed the pooch, man. Maru's in big, big duty. Look, he gets blocked. He gets blocked. If he can't get the Hellions on the inside, the Lings will overwhelm him. He only keeps three Hellions alive. Not enough to stop this Zergling Flood. It's a disaster of a start here for Maru. One bio lands on the Liberator, the Road Ravager Ling, doing massive, massive damage. If he can kill these SCVs building these bunkers or kill the Marines before they get inside, either way will do. He's going to take out that first bunker. The Marines do hop into this bunker on the left side. Very nice in and out micro from Maru. And actually with the landed Viking. Oh, the Biles miss! The Biles miss the Liberator! He actually keeps that Liberator alive. Maru should try to repair that. If he can repair that and repair the bunker, he's going to repair this bunker. Try to repair these bunkers. Oh, the Liberator's going to go down. Liberator falls. Viking falls. Bunker falls. The Marines go down. There's one tank in a dream right now. Dark is winning with an old school build. These builds aren't meant to work anymore. The fact that Dark has just stolen two games in a best of seven off Maru with them, that's a big mistake for Maru. He should not be letting this happen. He's got to remember to scout that third for the lack of drones. All right, guys, Maru in the bottom right. It's a small adjustment that needs to be made, which is, of course, just scout for work account on the third. Now, he's going for the low ground barracks, but it is a single barracks on the low ground, not two barracks. Do see this on this map because you get that nice ramp. Quite easy to defend that. Hatch gas pool for Dark. He's going back to what he knows best, and that's that's the correct attitude. Yeah, I remember when Serral first started doing 15-15, you could really see Serral had studied the build and came up with a bunch of variations that he knew down to the, the tiniest details. And since then, we've seen Dark, Rainer, and Solar all experiment with 15-15. And they all look varying degrees of unprepared for certain scenarios with it. For Dark, it was that that Golden Aura game. Um, but I remember like Rainer ran into a game against a 3-Rex Reaper, I think it was, and didn't know what to do, or a 2-Rex Reaper from Beyond, and ended up way behind. And there's been a few different things like that where it's kind of funny, because I remember Serral, you know, it was almost a full year ago now when he started doing it, and so quickly he was bringing out these beautiful transitions these responses these openings these killer roach timings to kill people who built their barracks on the low ground and uh it's it's amazing how he really bent this opening build order to his will um a guy like dark who and i don't mean this in an insulting way it's my honest assessment i, I feel ever since he's had military service hanging over his head he's been stuck in a bit of limbo where at any moment for the last few years, it's been, oh, he, he has to get his passport renewed. They let him renew it for six months only. And they keep going, your, your military service is going to be, on, at any moment, you're going to get your notice. And you're going to have to go do military for 18 months, maybe two years. And um, yeah, as a result, Dark's been grinding tournaments, winning as much money as he can. Doesn't feel like he's really felt like he's going to have enough time to really invest in relearning brand new openings and build orders or, or relearning and working on his fundamentals again it's hard for any player to do that 10 years into their career but especially if you've got the, the the kind of specter of military service hanging over you and then covid happens and it gets delayed and it gets delayed again and he's going to be playing katowice again in a week's time and, and, and i'm kind of like how has he got permission to go to katowice i thought they're 
they're like, military service is going to happen, but he's, he's, he's joined Talon Esports. He said on Twitter, thanks for supporting me. This will be my last dance. But he said that last year. He said it so many tournaments over the last few years, and, and it kept getting postponed. So I do feel like Dark has not studied build orders in a long time. And his openings uh, have definitely gotten sloppier than earlier in his career. It's, it's incredible that he's still able to play as, as well as he is, though. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad for Maru, guys. If he goes up that ramp and sees that Roach Horn, he cancels this armory. He's doing a Hellbat timing. He's doing a very fast Hellbat timing. It's going to be five Marines in a Medivac. Maybe, yeah, five Marines in a Medivac and six Hellbats. Roaches hard counter this opening. And this is a no Ling Speed Roach build. I love that Dark's gone back to this one. If you're planning to play Roaches, this is the classic way of doing it. I don't even care if you scout my Roach Horn. I'm just going to get Roaches up, get a few Queens, less than I would with Ling Bane, but, but a decent number. And uh, we're going to do it that way. Here comes the Medivac. Medivac, Hellion joining up. Two more Hellions should be rallying. Oh, only one building for Maru. Liberator coming in behind it as well. Third Command Center massively delayed. He shouldn't go for the Overlord. The Overlord's a, a prize to take on the way home if you have to back away. There's 11 Roaches building. Dark was going to do a Roach pressure himself. Dark, without even knowing what's coming, has the hard counter. Get out of there, Maru. Maru's Medivac gets shot down. He does not realize just how many Roaches are about to pop out. The positioning is perfect for Dark. An ever-expanding Concave so that the Hellbats can't get splashed. The drones can run to the third as long as they don't even need to. That is a shutdown. The shutdown of all shutdowns. Five to one units lost. The moment he saw the Ark of Queens with a few Roaches out, he should have pulled back. If it was just the Queens, Maru could have done it. But the moment he saw Roaches, he should have realized, I have to pull back. It's, it would have been bad for him. He wouldn't have got a lot of damage, but they would have been, even on workers, him able to start a third command center. Because he chose to commit in there, he now finds himself in a place commonly referred to as D-Town in my community. Um... And it, it's a place that doesn't smell too good. People have said it smells like gooch. Um, and I can't say they're wrong. If you go for a big committed attack and they're ready for it, it doesn't feel great. But as long as you keep the units alive, you can absolutely find a use for them later. If you throw those units into the meat grinder, that's where it's a disaster. And Maru, he's trying to come back with an alien run by. He's getting good damage, man. Eight workers for three aliens is not bad. Unfortunately, he lost his depot and his barracks. The SCVs are going to have to run away. The Banshee will eventually stop this. But how much damage is going to happen in the meantime? Roaches here not quite making up their mind on what they want to focus on. Looks like they are going to take out the cloak upgrade. Says, eh, this way I don't need detection. Why not? Roaches splitting up. Two roaches going to the natural. Three in the main base. Three is enough to one-shot SCVs. Dark's mi micro has been a little bit negative on these roaches. Not the greatest. Oh, he's because he's microing these two perfectly. That's why. Perfect micro in the natural while the three roaches... Oh, they're attacking an armory still. Yeah, he's really mismicroed those roaches in the main. But the roaches in the natural. Oh, they're killing the marines as well. Breaks down the wall with a few more. Even one of the drones is here. I'm one of the boys. Oh, I'm here to get revenge. My friends got burnt to death by some of these dirty humans. Oh, okay. Actually, there's, there's a flying thing that shoots whiplash rockets. Yeah, let's get out. Backlash rockets, sorry. <laughs> I just said the dumbest mental image. I was like, oh, that, I was like, whiplash rockets. And then I just imagined... um. What's his name? J.K. Simmons? Like, every rocket just is J.K. Simmons' head spiraling at you, shooting gas out of its butt, and he's just shouting, like, insults like he does in the in the Whiplash film. It's like, yeah, you're never going to amount to anything. You suck. Oh, my God, you're useless. And you're just like, whoa, this is a very violent weapon. Um, Great movie, by the way. Anyone out there think he was a, a good guy? I, I'm thinking psychopath. I'm thinking psychopath, and there's no way you need to abuse someone like that to bring out genius. I think when I watched it, I was like, that's kind of beautiful. You know, he kind of made him great. And then in hindsight, I'm like, there's no way. That's crazy. You're actually, there's no way you need to torture someone to do that. Nice cancel on the fourth base for Maru. Does get that one down. Double Evo Chamber on the third. Spire almost finished. Five barracks coming up. Hehehe. <laughs> Chat's like, anyone that thinks he was anything but a monster is worrisome. We need to put you on a, a watch list. I was like, well, it's, I was like, it's not that. I was like, oh, there's kind of a redeeming factor, you know? Is it kind of good? It was, it was, there was always a question mark. I wasn't all like, this guy is awesome. This character is the best. This is how I want to raise my children. <laughs> I wasn't that level of, uh, of supportive of it. I was just, it was just fascinating the results, you know? An unorthodox method of getting great results. Uh, definitely not, not my, not my cup of tea. But uh, I was like, oh, is there something to it? I thought I thought about it longer than I probably should have had to. Anyways. 
Marines off pumping here. Muta's moving down the right side. Ooh. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Mutalis is going to fly in. Dark's going back into Ling Bane behind this. He's got a decent squad of roaches out. Can he defend the counter drop? Assuming he keeps his fourth up, it's game over. Even if he loses his fourth, it's probably game over. He's doing a lot of damage. Fourth base, worker lines in jeopardy. Whoa. Muta's going to go back to the natural. Turret's up there, though. All right, he's going to start losing a couple of these mutas if he hangs around any longer. Oh, he finds a tank. Discount value prize on the way home. Oh, that's a juicy. Does get the medevac and the siege tank. Nicely done. Dropping the main gets pushed back. Fourth base survives. Drones return to mining. Maru once again finds himself on a heavy dose of copium. This time, he was going for a bit of a gambly attack. Hoping to catch Dark being greedy. But Dark was once again being aggressive. And I, I think after this game, Dark is just going to keep playing aggressive. <laughs> He's like, well, when I attack with roaches, I win. And when I try to defend and play Ling Bane, I lose. And this has kind of been the theme between these two for a while. Has been like, like playing Ling Bane against Maru, Dark has a very low win percentage. Could do that double upgrade build from Valencia again. I think one of the best builds he could focus on is um, just do a really standard Ling Bane opening. But stop at 60 workers and just mass Ling Bane off four gases. Maybe even three gases. And, and you know, wait for Maru to pressure you and then do a big counterattack that's just been waiting in place. While, uh, you know, oh, it's, it's kind of like a defensive all-in. I think that's a really good way of catching a guy like Maru off guard. I remember I was talking to Scarlet about this strategy for a while and how as long as you hit the natural with that counterattack rather than just wasting time on the third, you can kill, you can kill like, top Terrans. And the next day she, she messaged me... Uh, and she's like, oh, I, I two-zeroed Maru on ladder. And I was like, oh, no way, that works. <laughs> I was like, I was talking about me beating 4GG, not beating actual Maru on the ladder. But Dark there comes out on top. That was a, a, just a really good defense. And I want to go back and talk about that really quickly before we finish this game. That's a crisp timing, guys. The hell, that timing is beautiful. This is the moment where the pattern recognition failed for Maru. Three roaches, five queens, perfect arc. And you don't know how many more roaches are about to come out. Even if no more roaches pop, this is a questionable fight. If he instantly turns around and runs away, Maru can defend the counterattack, and it's a perfectly fine game. You're only down five workers. But the moment he decides to commit here, it's just, it's a disaster. And this was very poor decision making for Maru. He'll be kicking himself for this, really unnecessarily attacking into a position. And it's, it's the mistake you make sometimes when you commit hard to an attack, and this is a very committed attack. Sometimes you just start thinking of it as a, it's not even a decision, it's I am committed, and no matter what I see, I have to do damage here. If your opponent's already building 11 roaches, they're doing damage to themselves, you can pull out. But that puts Dark up 3 to 2. Very nice. All right, he's on a uh, death point. This is his last life. He's got to make it happen right here. If he can't make it happen here, he's screwed. Maru in the top right side of the map. It's Solaris, a map which I think is very balanced, which is why you see it towards the tail end of a series, because neither side feels particularly advantaged here. Dark at the bottom left. Maru has some fantastic tank timings. He did a great tank timing on this spot down here against, uh, I think it was Serral in the upper bracket? Or oh, actually in the Swiss stage. It was in the, the very early stage of the tournament, the Swiss stage, which is like a kind of like a round robin. If you're not familiar with Swiss formats, just think of it that way. And uh, I think he put a tank there, didn't he? And he had like this lovely little marine setup. It was about 7 minutes 20 he hit off a 3 command center build. Nice way to do it. I think those sort of timings do really well versus Dark if he plays Ling Bane as well. Like I said though, if Dark just goes like real simple Ling Bane, doesn't try to play 75, 80 workers, doesn't try to go to Hydras, just Ling Bane, nothing else and have a real simple opening, I think he's got a decent shot. It's a hatch gas pool again, an opening he's more familiar with, so I like this build for Dark. I think there's less chances of him messing up his opening since he's done it so many thousands of times. Hey Pig, what do you think about the idea of zones similar to speed zones that would reduce your unit health while inside or add health in other zones? Add health in other zones? There are healing shrines that uh, have been added in the recent Tim Liquid map contest. A few maps uh, with those healing shrines on them won. Hopefully they make it onto ladder in the next season. So uh, they, they heal your units, I think it's like 10 life every second or two or something like that. So low hit point units like Zerglings and Marines get like a massive chunk of their hit points every tick. But uh, I don't know about damage zones. Damage zone seems a little bit more um, interesting because it's like, okay. 
you can go through here with like big tanky units, but not small units, or it's you take damage, but you get in a secret backdoor entrance. I think you could play with it. I think it'd be really cool. StarCraft player base is very conservative though. So generally speaking, I think they'd be pretty against damage zones, whereas Healing Shrines has already been pushing it a little bit. And I, I think that'll be great. All right. Reaper's gonna come in, try and find some damage. Oh, Zergling goes down. Zergling pulls back. Ooh, if he can get two more Zerglings on the way out, that'd be great. Dark's gotta pull back those Lings. Great def great, uh, great offense, two, re two Lings already. Healing Shrines is one step, a close step closer to Warcraft. Yeah, there's a lot of StarCraft elitists that just like anything that isn't the StarCraft formula, they're like, no, that's a Warcraft thing. Yeah, and it kind of is, but I don't know. What's wrong with that? <laughs> but like, cause it's not StarCraft, that's why. There's like a, a lot of very anti-Warcraft StarCraft players I've, I've noticed over the last year. It's very interesting to see. I, I like both games. StarCraft's the game I like more. I like StarCraft more, especially like multiplayer. But uh, Warcraft 3 has a special place in my heart. Third command center doesn't get scouted, but I think from the starport and Hellion timing, you could probably guess that it is a third CC. No link speed into Rochor and second gas. Dark's just chilling. Dark's doing his best style. And I think it's a good idea, but since Maru's playing a more defensive opening, this is going to be interesting because it's, it's not a roach aggression. If it is, it'll be slow roaches like that last game. He was planning an 11 roach push. Um, but I think Maru will be scouting the third. He'll be seeing the roach move outs this game because he's died too much to that. And he's going to play a standard bio follow-up, no doubt. So, wait, why is he? Oh, he's playing mech. Maru's playing mech. It's mech versus roaches. Roaches, pre-roach speed, suck versus cyclones. There's quite a lot of Overlord supply free for Dark. Normally he's a guy who likes getting supply blocked all the time. He's building five roaches. It could be defensive. Yeah, I think it's defensive. He builds a sixth roach. So Cyclone's wreck roach. He's building eight. He's going to go for a roach push into Banshee. And I say it's mech because why is there another tech lab? But actually, never mind. I'm dumb. This is not necessarily mech. This could absolutely be bio. He's building more marines. It's probably bio. Sorry, I don't know why. I, I, because the starport was building a uh, Viking, I thought he was going to go Lib. But no, it was just Viking into Banshee, which is... I don't like the delayed Banshee that much, but it definitely is great at shutting down this sort of Roach aggression. So, this would be really nice for him. The Viking already killed one Overlord. It's going to go look for more, but you can see on the minimap, Dark's pulled all of his Overlords back, so no freebies for that Viking. Drones are coming in behind it. It's not an all-in, but of course, those Banshees will shut it down. First one is out. Does need to get down here. And he finally pulls it to the front, does Maru. Losing one Hellion so far for two Zerglings. As the Roaches see the Banshees, I wouldn't be surprised if they just run home. And yep. Maybe drop some Biles. Try to try to land those on that. Yeah. Just kind of scattering it. Just saying, oh, I'm just going to make you micro. Watch out for that. Oh, the Hellion's chasing on top. You've got to be a little wary. Trading a Hellion for a Roach. Another Hellion does fall. Banshee and the Marines here as well. Maru gonna keep that in. Yeah. Throwing those away would be a problem. Five barracks coming up. Double upgrades. Oh, well, double engineering base finished, but only plus one attack started. He must have been a little shy on the gas there for Maru. Oh! Hellion run by. Roaches are slow. Ravages are not that fast either. They're a bit closer to a roach with roach speed, but not quite there. Luckily, only four drones go down. Dark has 64 workers. Double evolution chamber will be able to start the upgrade soon after six minutes, so not too late. And I do wonder what style he plays from here. We haven't really seen him play a pure Roach into Lurker Viper style for a while. Plus one range does start. It almost always is Roach Ravager back into Ling Bane. And if you look at Dark's strengths as a player, he's so much he'd be so much better off this build if he just dropped an Infestation Pit and made Infestors. But he only does it when he's way behind. And that's kind of a problem. If he just goes a couple of Infestors like he used to with the old Cave Bob style, and then, then techs up. Even if he just swaps into Ling Bane afterwards, I think a few Infestors would be amazing. Oh, nice defense! The Banshee running out of Cloak and Maru not too happy with that, man. Losing one of your Banshees, you lose the lethality. It's no longer as powerful. Oh, man. No plus one armor. That's a mistake. Maru has not realized his plus one armor never started. Infestation Pit is on the way. Dark's going to try and take the rich gas base. And there we go. That Baneliness telling us he's planning to go Lings. 
But there's a more important thing than the Baneley Nest, which is Ling Speed. Now, arguably, you have to get the Baneley Nest to start Bane Speed, but you also need that Ling Speed. There we go. He does remember it. Very important upgrade. Plus one armor finally starting for Maru, whose combat shields is on the way. He's building Marines and tanks. 22 Marines, two Siege tanks. He's going to go just for a drop, though. Fourth Command Center is on the way, so he's playing quite defensively. Doesn't want to take the risk of having his army cleaned up by Roach Ravager and then Dark counterattack to win the game. Dark's taking a fifth up north. This means if Dark loses control of this area, he loses the game. If he controls this area out front of his rich gas base, he should be able to protect the heart of his economy. Of course, the double drop can still probe the south. There's a few roaches and zerglings there. Dark did not see this leave the base. He just knew that, hey, at this timing, my army's very exposed in the top. It's far away. I need to be ready in case there's drops in the south. Oh, that's a beautiful scan. If he can get that active tumor up the top with this as well, which I think he can. Oh, I would, I would have been tempted to try and drop on that tumor. But the tumor disappears once the scan's gone. Can't see it. Three more barracks on the way, as well as a second factory. Maru still building siege tanks. Plus two attackers on the way, as well as plus one vehicle weapons. The Dark, he's got plus one melee queued up, but no plus two carapace, the more important of the upgrades. That's where I... He's got... Yes, he built two infestors. That makes me very happy. I, I, would, I would prefer three or four. I think the more infestors you give Dark, the more magic he makes happen. But... Getting the Infestors out is really good. I feel like this is just... Dark becomes so much more powerful with the Infestor. So few Zergs able to make it as useful as he does. Oh, here we go. Marine stimming in the south side. Dude, what a close series we've had. I think a lot of people would have seen this lineup at the start and expected a, a 3, uh, you know, 4-2, 4-1 for Maru. The fact that Dark's ahead creates a bit of hype here. I still don't fully believe that Dark can finish off this series, but you never know. He's finding himself going towards that later stage. Maru's building lots of commands and his watch out, watch out with the fungal. Great fungal catch. Oh, the second fungal, not as big. Bile's not able to land, of course. Fungal Bile never lands on Metavax, but at least he kills a few Marines. Gets uh, seven Marines for two fungals. It's not like big value, but it does at least, you know, it scares him off his future advances. Two Vipers are on the way. Ultra Cavern plus two Carapace finally starting as well. Plenty of units in the main base. Redrop in the north as well. Maru's being a bit cheeky with his drippy droppies. Got to be careful there, mate. Drilling Claws is on the way. Three Command Centers building. Wow. Wow, Maru's really trying to get to late game on this one. Now, as you expand, this base, I think, is not too bad, especially if you build an orbital with some tanks on the high ground. You can always lift it. But it looks like he's probably going to go planetary there. If you take that base, then you take this base quite easily. But uh, you just got to realize this top area is a big weak point. And you have to basically reinforce it with bunkers, tanks, libs, warlocks, anything you can. Because you're not going to be able to put a lot of army up here on your third. And it's always going to be weak to Zergling run buys. Plus two melee starts as well. Adrenal glands is on the way. Where are those Vipers, guys? Oh, full energy Vipers getting spotted there. Maru's aware of the threat. He drops a Ghost Academy going, Oh, okay, I might be a little late on this Ghost Academy. I was focusing on building my Command Center account, but we've got to be careful of those Vipers, dude. Five Widow Mines, six Siege Tanks, eight Marauders, 33 Marines. A few other units scattered out. 95 Zerglings, 23 Banelings, 18 Roaches, three Ravagers, and of course the two Infestors and the two Vipers are the big potential playmakers. No Burrow just yet in this game for Dark. They're both in a bit of a standoff, waiting for the other player to make a doo-doo. Widow Mine drop going around the north. Quad drop in the south, a bit of bio with a single Widow Mine and two Hellbats. Eh, you could pick up and go in the main base. There's a few spores, but you can clean those up. There's only Vipers for anti -air, so That could work pretty well. But a mind drop there. Oh, here we go. Dark's going to go for it. He says, you got four drops out of position, mate. Let's go. Blinding Cloud does go down on a few of the tanks. Parasitic Bomb. Oh, he accidentally abducts the Medivac. That was meant to be the siege tank. The Vipers do all go down. The tanks are getting ransacked. The Mineral Line just got uh, annihilated there. That was a nice attack for Dark, man. He's just going to pull Bont back out of there. That Viking is a hero, by the way. It just killed the Vipers. At least one of them died because of that Viking, if not two. Two drones going down on the fourth base. Um, yeah, that Viking was a hero. Also got, like, some Overseers and stuff after the fight. Widow Mines are borrowing. They're going to get a little bit of damage on the Queens, picking off a few drones with a splash. Quad drop in the south. There's still a bit of a problem. You're going to need Infestors or Banelings or something to deal with that. Only two Spores in the main. Now, this is five base against five base, which is obviously good for Maru. Maru might just have more income in this game. 
I might be able to just, just wait him out since he's got so many command centers. Seven orbitals already? Dude, he's going late game. Dark needs to up the ante. Dark needs to get the aggression going. He's building a Spire. He's making a Hydroden. That might be a bit too much diversification of tech. I feel like for him right now, the important thing is to just get going. Oh, this is huge. That Ultra in position. Oh my god, he almost gets the drops, but not quite. Nonetheless, picks off a few bio units. The medevacs are damaged. I'd love to see the Vipers just go down there and, and, and bomb them, but there are two new Vipers now out. Gathering energy. Two infestors on max energy, chilling at the back. He's actually got a control group for those, surprisingly. Was not expecting that. More command centers are on the way. We've got another orbital building right now. So there are seven orbitals. Eighth one is almost complete. Widowmine in the bottom got 10 kills. Looks like mostly Zerglings. Drop clearing some creep in the center. Greatest Spire is on the way. Greatest Spire is usually very useful, but in this scenario, I'm not sure if he's going to have an opening for it. Widowmine drop around two in the north of the map. Only getting a few drones though, nothing too big. Widowmine drop down here. Does get taken out before it can land. Oh, almost complete. Hydra upgrades are almost there. Seven more drones building. Dark has got to stop chilling. Dark, you you are not an endgame player. You're a tempo player. You cannot win endgame just by sitting here. Dark is a player who, he's, he's no match for Maru in the endgame, guys. Maru, especially if he gets to range libs, which he's nowhere near just yet, but his ghost count's growing, his base count's growing, he's putting turrets and widow mines all through the middle to help deal with the vipers and the investors and everything. Um... This is not me hating on Dark, but he should not be going straight to Great Aspire unless he sees Mass Siege Tank or something like that that, that really favors Maru. But Maru is actually on Bio Ghost. Just a few Siege Tanks. That's that's a very mobile army that can deal with him, and he's going to go to 11 Barracks. Look at that. Four more Barracks? Very wise. Maru is building Insurance right now. Saying, I just need to be able to rebuild quickly, make sure he can't swarm me. Dark is on a low-tier mobile army that needs to smash in and trade. He should be nidusing. He should be doing drops. Anything he can. I like this move. Runs in on the top. He's got two infestors. Those guys burrow behind. He's going to try and bait him forwards. He gets scanned, though, so he has to pull back. Other army runs in the south. The Widowmine, not a bad Widowmine. Banelings do get some decent connections. Dark supply sucks. That's a big problem right now. Oh, I love this. Goes in, goes out, goes back in on the north. Gets uh, nine SCVs there. Damages a few more. Problem, the Roaches. So, the problem with the supply is he's got right now 26 supply stuck in Roach Ravager. These units are trash. The Ravagers aren't too bad, but he really should be trying to get rid of these Roaches. Dark's got the bank. He needs to stop Maru before Maru gets to endgame. Maru is Terran. They are favored in endgame. If you, if you let him build 15 command centers, he has map hacks on the entire map. He has planetaries everywhere. He's got mass ghosts. He's got range lib. It is on Dark to punish him. And also to try to mine out these middle bases. Otherwise, he's going to mine out. That northern base a bit harder to hold. He should also be trying probably to deny this base since it's the most exposed. Oh, lovely nuke. Look at that from the high ground. Let's go to Dark's camera. Dark's panicking. Dark's panicking. He's looking around. He hasn't found it. He hasn't found it. He hasn't found it. Okay, he sees it. No, he doesn't see it. He doesn't see it. Oh my god, he sees it at the last second. And he barely gets out. Only loses an extractor and a drone or two. Whew. That could have been worse. Where are the Overseers? Does he have Overlord speed, guys? No Overlord speed and not a single Overseer. He's manually blowing up Banelings to kill it. Oh my god. Okay, it took like seven Banelings to kill that. Alright, Dark. Dark needs to get something done. The longer he lets this go, the more it favors Maru. Because Terran have a lot more things they can build with that money. Zerg's just sitting on the bank, slowly touching themselves. And that's not a that's not a dark being bad thing. That's a that's all Zerg can do at this stage. You need to trade and tech switch and trade and trade and find openings. He's looking for it. But that's a big meaty Marauder Widow Mine Ball. Another nuke comes in. Maru's starting to play with him right now. Luckily he sees it. He sees this one. Okay, takes that ghost out. Nicely done. South side. He's under attack though. Not many Banelings in the mix. The Lings are good versus the Marauders though. Lings are very good at taking out Marauders. There might just be a bit too much Ghost Widow Mine Marine support though. There's still a lot of roaches in the back. Not the most effective supply. Overseer's also getting sniped down. Overlord Speed's finally making. But a bunch of those Overseers do fall. Maru trading very well in this last fight. 2,000 resources lost advantage, which is not big for him. It's not a massive advantage for this matchup, but it's a slower gameplay pace so far. EMPs try to land on those Vipers. They only take one before the Vipers pull back. Good micro by Dark. Oh my god. Okay, only two kills. Good spread there for Dark at the last second. 
Advanced Ballistics is on the way, as well as three Starports with Reactors. That'll make it a total of four. Oh, Army in the middle does get sniped. Ultra goes down. Watch out. I'd love to see these Infestors burrowed around the map, trying to catch these moves for Maru. There's only one Infestor out right now. No ship weapon upgrades and only a single Armory, so the ship weapons will be quite far behind. Hydras are being mixed in. Yeah, if, if Dark doesn't find a way in, it's, it's a foregone conclusion. Because you're never going to be able to mine this base in the top for long. I doubt it. And if even if even if you do, if Maru mines this bottom base, in the long term, you're going to trade so much worse as a Zerg. It's going to be rough. Time is not Dark's friend. Time is Maru's friend. If, if Maru can just survive for long enough, keep the game reasonably even, he's going to be great. Because he can start sacrificing SCVs soon as well. As he mines out all these minerals, he can start to throw workers away because he's still going to have mule mining. Zerg can't do that for a lot longer. And in fact, Dark just built five more drones. There's no, there's not that many resources left on this map. He should not be building workers at this stage. The resources are going to run out. He definitely should try to fully saturate these middle bases and deny Maru's ones. If he can't do that, though, it's going to be tough. Parasitic Bomb goes down in the medevac. Marine bio coming down. Good split on the medevac forwards. Does end up taking a lot of fire damage on that, though. Planetary takes out 24 Zerglings before going down to mass Zerglings surrounding the south. Both players are trading those center bases, a move which Maru is absolutely happy to do. As long as you're not mining it, he can he can move forward and mine it later. Nukes are on the way, three libs at a time, ship weapons, and the Caduceus reactor. Plus 100% energy regen rate for Medivax. Oh, ghost, ghost lib coming down, ghost lib coming down. Link Bane rolling for it. This is a one-way trip. He's going to take the base out at least. But he will lose quite a lot of Ling Bane to do so. Would have been nice if he did a combat burrow to burrow in the middle of that. Tries to burrow there. The scan does take him down. Not a cost for cost trade that's good for Dark though. Trades like that, you can see he's now down 5,000 resources and the units lost. That number will grow the more he does moves like that. Widow Mines in the middle starting to get cleaned up. We've still got seven roaches in the army that are completely worthless. Thankfully, Maru does him a favor and snipes on them. Maru gets in the south side, takes out that base as well. Maru is in control right now. He's finding no stiff resistance. He did lose some SCVs, but I think he's happy to lose those SCVs and replace that with more army. Nice EMP goes down. The first fungal was great, but the Banelings were too far behind. Dark trying to get on top of those ghosts, but the ghosts are already out of the fungal. They're cloaking, they're spreading back. There's no detection. That was an absolute slaughter. Dark committing to an awful engagement there. He thought the fungal was good enough to make it happen. And I can understand why you fungal 12 ghosts. You think, oh my god, I've got this. But his army, his banelings were still back here at that point. They, they were still only filtering in a little at a time. And now it is 9,000 resources lost advantage. Dark's bank is gone. And Maru absolutely destroys him in the end game. All right, all right, all right. Well, we found ourselves in game seven. I did not expect this series to be going this far. Maru in the top right side playing a low ground single barracks wall off yet again. Ooh, risky build order. Map with no ramp against the guy who's been shoving roaches at you all day. We'll see what Dark brings in. This map decides it all. Alcyon is a very balanced map in this matchup. Very fair in general. And what are we doing? What is this? Ah, oh, spotting depot. Okay. He wants to be able to spot overlords coming in. Nice. I see. I was like very confused. I was like, you don't have enough money for a third command center yet. What are we, what are we building? He's going to go two marines. He's looking for that overlord. She will find. He's got to lift the, the barracks if he wants this, right? Oh, no. He's going to get it. He's got to, Oh, he's not started stepping his marine in the back. If Maru doesn't get it, it's purely because he didn't micro. Oh, whew. He would have been very annoyed if he didn't get that, but luckily he does. Because his, his back marine wasn't stutter stepping, and therefore it was not shooting as often as it could have. Reactor does come down though after that factory, looking very good. Second gas almost finished there. On sides, Maru looking like a beast. Um, Dark has made no link speed this game, so he's mined 100 gas. I think if it was like a two racks reaper, he would have reacted with link speed. But because it's not, he's like, no, nope, no need. Oh, oh, he sees the swappy swap. He's like, hello. I was, I was getting excited. I forgot there were two Marines here. Because if there wasn't, the Zergling could have blocked it from landing. If that was six Zerglings and they just jumped in, that could have been game ending. 
Because if you chase the marines with four or five zerglings, one blocks the buildings from landing, it's massive, massive problem. Maybe not game ending, but a huge disruption. Tons of drones on the way right now. I do expect a roach horn somewhere between before 345 at the latest. Marines on the front, a few Hellions coming in behind them. Cyclones are on the way. Roach horn goes down. Cyclones are pretty good versus non-speed roaches though. And with no ability to build link speed, you can struggle. The Cyclones should be able to get some value. I doubt they can kill Dark, but they should be able to annoy him. Got that lovely Brood War soundtrack kicking in right now for the final game. The second gas in the main. Uh, Dark does not have a chance of aggression other than 11 speed roaches like he did on Sight Delta. It's unlikely he opts for that, especially since he's about to find aliens and Cyclones knocking on his door. He's a little supply blocked, but the Overlords are going to pop and we'll immediately see roaches on the way. Two, two more drones, only three roaches. Oh, he's still a little supply block. Did he just lose an Overlord? Oh, he just lost an Overlord, right? No, I guess that died earlier. Why are these Overlords so late? Did he cancel an Overlord accident? I swear he had another Overlord building. Maybe I maybe I miss, uh, didn't look at the production tab correctly. Oh God, it's a scary moment. Cause why, wait, wait, why does Mario have Marines in here? Oh, that's weird. I did not expect him to bring Marines with this. What an odd pressure. The Marines lack any sort of mobility, which they're just there as like a little bit of extra damage, but they'll die very easily. Third command center about halfway done. We've got a second and third barracks on the way. The Roaches are coming forward, 10 of them. I think the Cyclones can micro against this pretty well. Just make sure you don't block them with the Marines here. Don't block them with the Marines! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hellion Dive, Hellion Dive. Okay, this could be big, this could be big. Okay, okay, Maru's going for it. Hellion Dive comes in. How many is he gonna get? Seven! Dude, was that for like one Hellion? Two Hellions have gone down, seven drones? That is beautiful. There's a Banshee on the way right now as well. So that Banshee will defend any sort of Roach counterattack. The Cyclones are already causing Dark to have to heal them all by morphing them into Ravages, which means this is even more committed, but it does give more of an opportunity to find damage. Maru needs to get his defenses back. Looks like his Liberator killed two drones as well. And now is pulling back to try and help him on the defense. Stim does kick in. At least that's not going to be denied. He's got to make sure he doesn't lose his barracks. Liberator coming in from the left. Should be trying to repair that wherever possible. Okay, Liberator sieging up. Banshee will go forth. And I think Dark, with the Banshee raining down death on him, puts him on a timer. Oh, Maru! If he could bile down the, bar the barracks, that'd be huge. You really want to try and bile down those barracks wherever possible. Both barracks being forced to lift. That one does land. The Banshee chases it off. Great defense by Maru. That was a scary moment in this game where everything could have turned south. But now he floats his third out. He keeps up his production. He is hitting a bit of a supply block. Maru under pressure. Also needs to make sure that third barracks does not burn down. But the Banshees and the Cyclones will chase out and get at least a few of these roaches uh, down. Two Ravages indeed did die. Third base is fully saturated for Dark, but no fourth on the way. His Evos have just started at a very late time. His Lair's not done. And you've got this little map control squad. You can send the Liberator to harass. You can micro... I don't know. I still don't... I'm kind of confused that he keeps bringing Marines with his Cyclones, though. I think this makes it very awkward to micro the Cyclones because they're slower and your Cyclones get stuck on them. So I do think Maru's playing a bit weird with how he's pressuring. Liberator harassment comes in again. Dark a little slow to respond. But the triple bile, always an answer to the Liberator, unless you miss one. Six drones do go down, nice damage. Maru's got a fourth command center. He's putting a fourth command center out front? What? He's going up to extra fourth and fifth reactor, but remember, he's lost so much barracks production time. He has no units right now. He should be going up to eight barracks pretty quickly. Uh, his armory does start. His 2-2 will be quite delayed, but he'll still maintain an upgrade advantage because 1-1 one, one has just begun. For Dark, Dark's going more drones and an infestation pit. So Dark is willing to play a macro game here. He's going Ling Speed, 1-1 one, one melee carapace, and towards the Hive and a Bailing Nest. Now, interestingly, Maru still has not built those three extra barracks. He's starting to get his Marine count up to just 17 Marines at seven and a half minutes. But I, I think those three barracks will be a big priority in the near future. I, I don't know who's ahead or behind. I think economically speaking, Maru's in a great spot because he's going to have a fourth finished at eight minutes and he can just like turtle up. On the, on the other side, this gives Dark a lot of freedom. Even though Dark's opening has been, for lack of a better word, munted, 
It's 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 been stunted. It's been munted, and it just it, it, his creep sucks. He's, he doesn't have much map control, but. All you've got is Banshee's pressuring, and now your first double drop. If Dark takes advantage, gets his creep way out there, and then just pumps out a big army on 80 workers. Oh my god, Maru's already building a... What the hell? Maru is gearing up for the turtle late game. I mean, he outmatched Dark so badly in that last game. Maru says, let's just get to the late game. But this is a big mistake. Going for the fifth command center before your next three barracks? Why take the risk? You know you're going to beat him in late game. You don't need to be wildly ahead. Maru's playing exceptionally greedy, but man. Oh, this is so bad. Dark just lost every single queen. Oh no, Dark. He only had six queens. He just lost all of them. He's rebuilding a single queen right now, but Maru is both being greedy and doing damage. This is very bad for Dark. Dark still has a lot of supplies stuck in Roach Ravager. Maru is bullying him right now. Maru says, okay, mate. I let you kill me with a dumb Roach Ravager Zergling all in twice at the start of this series. <laughs> I almost lost, but you know what? Now I'm in business. Two twos on the way. Vehicle weapons. Those three barracks will be going for tech labs momentarily. Second factory is building a tech lab. That's something I disagree with. That means he does not have a reacted factory. The reason that's a mistake is we know it's a swap into Ling Bane style. We know it's going to be just masses of Ling Bane like there always is and missing either Widow Mines or Hellbats, especially Widow Mines initially is a huge mistake in my opinion. So I'm hoping Maru adds a third factory for that reactor in the near future. Double drop loaded up. Maru doing a giant push right now. Upgrades are even 1-1 one, one versus 1-1. One, one. He's got to watch out for the Infestors. There's a lot of Roach Ravager. Denying this gold base is huge. He kills it. Not even a cancel. Dark is in so much trouble right now because he just, I mean, he spread the creep on the left a bit. So he's got a little bit of map control, but this right side, he really needs a big fungal ambush. Man, Maru's got to be careful. Those infestors are right there. He's clumped up as all hell. Kind of feels like Maru's not really watching his army right now. There we go. Bit of a spread there. Does get some tank shots off. Oh, cops are fungal, but only on a few Marines. Good dodge for Maru. Massive link counter attack comes in. There's a few tanks and a few Marines there. Not that many units. Maru is maxed. He doesn't have a wall off right now. Maru is maxed with no wall off. Oh gosh, he's got a tank on the high ground. Sergeant Chadhammer may save the day. A few Marines run in and do get taken out. Drop on the left kills another fifth base attempt there. Dark just cannot get an expansion up. Chadhammer on the high ground is saving the day. It's an orbital down here, not even a planetary. Maru's greed knows no bounds. What an absolute psychopath of a greed boy. Maru, not even building a planetary on his fourth. This guy has really just rushed to the late game. And unfortunately for Dark, he's let him get away with it. I mean, that Ling Run by did a little bit of damage, but it really was just a scratch. Maru's going to continue pushing now. He's got ghosts on the way. He hasn't started his 3-3. He has been a little slow on that. Plus two vehicle weapons does begin there. Infestors. Infestors are on him. Infestors are on him. Infestors are on him. Let's go. Parasitic bombs. Oh my god. Oh my god. Maru just idling his army deep in Zerg territory. Fungals take down every medevac. The whole army gets obliterated by a parasitic, parasitic bomb fungal wombo combo. Dark. Massive catch from way behind. He's up against the fence. He has not had a fifth base mining. He's up against a five base Terran with a gold base. Maru has way more money, way more stuff. But Maru has left a few openings. His natural has not been sealed. I do not know why he does not have a wall off in this game. He lifted off a building. The only explanation is laziness. No wall off on the high ground. No wall off on the natural. He is letting Ling stream into his bases. And Dark is borrowing them everywhere, being as annoying as he can. He didn't make a planetary on the right side. He's going to take advantage of that as well. Dark is like, come on, mate. You leave any hole, you know it's a goal. Those Zerglings will shove it right in with reckless abandon. Like a bunch of thirsty sailors getting back to shore for the first time in years at sea. They are finding those SCVs are giving them some great satisfaction. Banelings go after the planetary as well. Maru! Has Maru actually lost his gold base? He's so far ahead. But he's just getting caught out of position, refusing to wall off. Dark trying to make an impossible comeback right now. He's been in a pretty bad spot. But he's finally got the fifth base up there. That one also finished. No drones on them. Still only 78 workers. He's going to have to transfer workers. His third oversaturated. His natural massively oversaturated. His main a little oversaturated. Dark will start to fix up those drones in the near future. But right now, it's all run by as it's all aggression. Baneling's rolling in. The tanks aren't sieged. Run. Run the SCVs. Maru. Not dealing with it that quickly right now. It looks like some Zerglings unburrowed and distracted him. 
He does deal with those and finally takes out those Banelings. New command center on that base. How many orbitals we got, guys? Only five orbitals. For how greedy Maru played, yeah, he's about to, Okay, six orbitals now. He's not as far up the orbital count as I thought he would be. Scan does catch that Infester, though. Very important. No Infestors left. Just Mass Zergling, three Vipers, a few Ravages, and nine Banelings. He needs more Banelings. Unless he's just going to keep doing run -bys. Maru is making the exact same mistake. Is this Hero? Is this Hero or Maru? We are watching him play like Hero right now. He F2s his whole army across the map, leaves nothing at home. And round two of Zerglings in every single base simultaneously. What the heck? Maru, oh no! He keeps thinking it's fine, I'll just go kill him. Oh god, he did it again. It's fine, I'll just go kill him. Oh god, he did it again. Maru may be fumbling the bag right now. Tank Bio coming forward. The Ravagers do take a good little fight, but they have to pull back. But that just distracts Maru, forces his attention there, which means the Lings, they're killing his production. He's losing his buildings. Lings unburrowing in that fourth base. Oh my lord, the lack of the planetary on the fourth. Should not have been an issue this game, but the fact that he never walled off his main in natural is turning it into an issue because he's leaving his bloody defenses wide open. Maru has left his door wide open and left a pile of jewels and gold out there. He said, welcome. I like to welcome thieves into my house. The problem is the first thief came in, punched him in the face and took his money. And he's like, oh man, I forgot to pull my gun out of my safe. I was meant to be waiting to ambush them behind the door and I, I forgot. And why would you leave the door open if you don't have your gun ready? What are you doing? Oh, this is so unfortunate for Maru. He, he played so greedy. He got away with it. And now he's just getting ripped apart by Zergling runbys. Dark is doing a spectacular job and reminding us why you do not leave openings against Dark. You, you can't. You're going to give this man a free path into your base? He's just going to click Zerglings into every single base. This honestly reminds me of playing 4v4 Age of Empires 2 games. And everyone's with, with my noob friends. And, and, and I just click knights into every base and they can't handle it. Maru playing like four low ELO Age of Empires 4v4 players uh, simultaneously right now. It's crazy. Dude, he's lost his whole main. The Zerglings just ripping him apart. 3-3 three, three Zerglings absolutely destroying it right now. The Orbital floating over that gold base. Oh me, oh my, Bile's gonna take down that command center. Yauchis, Yauchi, Yauchis. Ooh, eBay's gonna go take a bunch of damage. Dude, if his plus, was he not on 3-3 this whole time? Did... How is he, he was on 2-2 as well. He's been on 2-2 against 3-3 as well. Oh, Maru just getting ripped a new one right now. The plus three attack gets denied. Oh man, this was such a beautiful opening and play. You could tell from the start, though, Maru was really leaning into the aggression, trying to keep the pressure on Dark. But man, leaving that door open not once, but twice, but thrice. The thing is, the, uh, Maru will be so upset with himself. Did he just morph a Dropper Lord to get the Lings out of the main into the fourth? Dark is feeling himself right now. He's like, wait, he's going to come hunt these Zerglings down. We finished killing the main. How can- Oh, I've got a Scouting Overlord still here. Let's morph it into a Dropper Lord and ferry Zerglings to the low ground. He was having fun at the end of that game. Dude, from quite far behind in that game, in a position where, where Maru got away with so much greed. But damn, leaving the door open a la hero style. And Maru ends up going down in a, a huge surprise. Dark with an amazing comeback and fantastic use of aggression throughout this series. GG, well played.